We're now going to look at some propagation techniques. There's two basic ways to propagate plants. One is by seed, and that's called sexual propagation, or one is by cuttings, which is asexual propagation. And when you grow plants from cuttings, from their green material, they reproduce exactly the same as the parent plant. Whereas if you grow the plants from seed, you get variation. Just like parents having children, they're a little bit alike, but not always. So plants from seed always have a bit of variation, but if we grow plants from cuttings asexually, they'll be exactly the same. So a lot of nurseries and a lot of people buying plants prefer plants that are grown asexually because they know exactly what they're getting. Once we've decided to do cuttings, there's probably three basic types of cuttings, and that's softwood cuttings, semi-softwood cuttings, and hardwood cuttings. Semi-softwood cuttings are done right now. October is the perfect time to do them. Semi-hardwood cuttings is when the wood is hardened up a little bit on the plants, and you'd be doing that in January, February. Hardwood cuttings, as it suggests, you do those in the winter, and that's when the wood is very hard on the plant material. So what I'm gonna look at today is a series of softwood cuttings. The plants most suited to softwood cuttings are herbaceous plants. They're herby plants, or they're plants that have a lot of soft growth. For example, this lemon geranium, beautiful. Lavendula dentata, the French lavender. Again, most of the wood on the whole plant is quite soft. We've got rosemary officinalis, less that little bit of lavender, and the salvia argentatus, which is a native salvia, but all the salvias respond very well to softwood cuttings. So in preparing my cuttings, it doesn't matter which type of plant I was going to do, I would prepare all the cuttings exactly the same way. And we'll literally start with the rosemary, which is very easy, but you strip the cutting of all its plant material, of all its foliage. You might even just take that little tip out of it, shorten it, and that would be one cutting. Now you would do probably, for these pots, I might do about 20 to 25 cuttings just in the one pot. So I'll just move through this a little bit. The other really important thing with cuttings is the soil material we're putting the cuttings into. The soil must be a propagating sand. It has to have very good drainage. Unlike potting soil that we use for our pots, it needs to hold moisture. This doesn't need to hold any moisture. The water must drain through these all the time. And these have to be watered every day. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to set these in a little glass house where there's an automatic watering system. If you don't have a little glass house at home, you generally put them on the kitchen bench where we've got consistent temperature and you again need to water them every day. Otherwise the cuttings will dry out and you won't get the root development that we're looking for. Okay, so when I've got my cuttings all together, I tend to just trim them all to the same size. The other really important thing with cuttings is that we use a rooting hormone. And the rooting hormone is just a stimulant that stimulates root tissue around the base of the plant, base of the cutting. You can actually use honey, which is a natural root stimulant. Now you've got to hold them in there for about 10 seconds. Make sure there's good contact. And then using a little dibble stick, I literally put my cuttings in the pot. Now, cuttings enjoy company. They like it when there's plenty in the pot. It sort of adds a little bit of humidity and keeps the temperature just a little bit consistent around the actual plants. The cuttings also have to be well pressed in. I remember my first cutting test at Burnley Horticultural College and the lecture, once you'd done all your cuttings, he'd come around, so you've got to make sure they're all pressed in. He would literally come around and tug every plant just to make sure it didn't come out of the pot. So that would be a perfect set of, uh, of rosemary officinalis cuttings. And we could expect probably within about four weeks, if we get consistent moisture, consistent temperature, that they would start to put some roots on. And then probably about six weeks, we would take them out very carefully and we'd actually put them into separate little tubes and then they are off and running. They could be planted out in probably about two months. So we just water these in. 
Give them a little bit of a shake just to make sure there's no air in the pot. And then I'm just going to place them on the tray here. I'm going to do a few more. And then when I've got a whole lot ready, we'll take them all over to the glass house and put them in the glass house. So I'm just doing the little Selvia argentatus. This has a much broader leaf, so what you can actually do is you'll see with cutting material, I quite often just trim down the larger leaves. And then I'm leaving the little top buds there in these, but you don't have to. So for example, if I wanted uh, to make this a cutting, as long as I'm cutting it just above the node there and just below that node, that's also a perfect cutting. And I'll just trim that down. But if you've got the top shoot, it's going to come away very easily from that top shoot. These are slightly thicker stems. Grab those together. Now I'm going to dip these in my, what I used to always call Ceridex, but it's just a, a rooting hormone. This is available from most of the hardwares. It's quite a common product. You might not get Rutex, but it'll be called a rooting hormone. Sometimes it comes in a powder, sometimes it comes in a liquid, or as I've mentioned before, you can just use honey. So again, I'm just gonna soak those in there. Gotta just be in there for about 10 seconds. I've wet these pots down. I've actually held these pots underwater uh, and allowed all the air to come out of those pots already, and that's very important. Bedding these in nice and firmly. Selvia argentatus is a uh, native plant that grows up in the New South Wales coast. But it's one of the very few plants, grey plants, particularly a native grey plant that'll do very well in the shade. So it's a, I like it a lot. Just give that a bit of a water. Beautiful French lavender. Again, when you pick this material, it's important that you pick the material and do your propagating work and your preparation work straight away. If this material dries out, of course, you're reducing your chance of success tenfold. So again, I'm just cleaning these up a little bit. Like with lavenders and a lot of this herbaceous material, the beauty of being able to propagate your own plants, which are so easy to do, is that, well, number one, it costs you a lot less. But these plants in a garden context, they outgrow themselves in about four to five years anyway. So if you can be regrowing them, it's just a nice way to replenish the, uh, the plants in your garden. And a lot of this herbaceous material does need that just for its own vigor. So I've just shortened all those. The other beauty of working with this is it just smells divine. So I'm gonna strip these really quickly. This is exactly how the nursery industry would do it on mass. <laughs> and they have, they're like little factories. They have lots and lots of people doing this. And once they get the uh, roots, they then have lots and lots of people pulling them apart and creating tubes, putting them in tubes and then growing them on. Again, give them a trim. Put them in our hormone powder. These are very easy to grow. Good drainage. I reckon we're ready to head off to the uh, off to the glass house. Now this is a pretty high-tech glass house here in the Botanic Gardens, and I wouldn't expect people at home to have one of these. But you can actually replicate these conditions quite easily. Often the kitchen bench near a window provides consistent temperature, 
good light and providing you keep the moisture up. As I said earlier, they need to be watered every day. I mean, in a glass house like this, we control the light, we control the moisture, and we even have uh, heating underneath the pot, so everything is controlled. The other thing you can do, and they're very available, is you can buy little glass house systems and they can sit out on the patio, and again, they're controlling the heat, you manage the water, and providing you've got them in a sunny spot, they'll really do, do you a good job at home. With this kind of softwood cutting, we've got a, probably a four to six week period before they start to produce some roots. Then what I would do is they would come up, we would, they would come out of these pots, we would pot them into tubes. We would then probably put them into another shade house, which just hardens them off a little bit before you put them out in, uh, in the garden. So really, that's all there is to it.